Oh, yes. Oh, cool, man. Oh, man. That's, I'll talk about whatever. That's that's frightening. Well, uh, <laughs> you know what? I'm. Yeah, I'll spring it on you. We'll we'll do that. Okay. So, so okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll just do it that way because that uh, Val is how we roll here yeah. Yeah. at the Visually Stunning Movie Podcast. Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome back to the show, Val Cameron from uh, What to See with Val, What to Eat with Val, What to Walk <laughs> Around and Look at with Val, um, How to Arrange Your Sock Drawer with Val. No, no, <laughs> no. No, I don't, match, I don't match my socks, so that okay. Might drive okay. Some people but everything else with Val. Hi, Val. How you doing? Hey, good. How are you? Uh, I'm wonderful. You and I have talked about talking about this uh, oh, for wild. a while. Your show, Movies That Make Us, talked about this, mm -hmm. and you were not here. No. So we're going to talk about Ted Lasso. Yes. Uh, because not only did you not get to talk about it with your show, Ryan, who is normally here, has not watched Ted Lasso yet any of it or just this season? he has seen like a couple of bits so i we told him to he have should... an intervention with ryan i keep telling him he should be ashamed of himself i just feel like every time i see ryan and i'm like hey how's it going and he's like you know if he watched ted lasso i feel like that would go up to like yeah everything's fine or, you know yeah. what i mean like it just yeah. it brings you up like a level. Yes. Whatever your level is, you definitely come up at least one. Uh, Ted Love Lasso. You, Ryan. Love you, Ryan. <laughs> yeah, we do. Uh, Ryan has a lot on his plate. Yeah. Um, Ted Lasso ran three seasons, just finished season three on Apple TV Plus. And Ryan and I say it all the time. We are not sponsored by Apple TV Plus. They do not pay us under the table. But damn, we love their content. The content is unreal. Like I'm addicted because there's so much good stuff. And like all on top of each other, like before Ted Lasso, I watched all of Silo, which yes, was great that is, oh, we could talk about that too. Shrinking and which you know, I have like, not watched, and yeah, I'm about I'm about halfway through a crowded room. A crowded room. So I am I've watched three episodes, but then I got sick. And a crowded room is something that you have to watch when you're up. Yeah, because that is a heavy. It's heavy. The it's anti lasso. A lot. It's yeah. So it's almost like watch shrinking, then watch the crowded room, and then watch Ted Lasso. You got to sandwich it between <laughs> right. some happiness because it's good, but it's heavy. So I haven't yeah. finished it yet. Right. Ryan and I are also fans of Slow Horses. Oh, okay. On Apple that's, TV Plus. that's on my Gary list. Gary Oldman in a British spy series. Yeah. I mean, it's on my list, but I haven't. As, as it should be. They're short yet. seasons yeah. too. But we're going to talk about Ted Lasso. Like I said, three yeah. seasons. 2020 to 2023 yeah literally the worst possible time to to build a tv show why would you say that that's when we have to be at home and okay, we have to, to sit down and we to need make a tv to show <laughs> not not a movie to make a three season tv show can't have know. been easy and i i kind of like it because what i love about ted lasso sorry to cut you off nope you're good is is that it's thoughtful from beginning to end and what i mean in that is all the way to production they when they put the show together they said we're going to have three seasons that is it this is a three season series that's what we're doing and then when you're put in this constraint of shooting you also have to be very thoughtful about your content when you're shooting you can't get all out of control so it is there's no nonsense. It is exactly what it needs to be. It's not some two and a half hour movie where 30 minutes of it is just crap that they decided to throw in that doesn't fit there. It because of those constraints, I feel like they were they had to edit, they had to be very meticulous. And everything that's and not everything, 90% of what's in the show deserves to be in the show. There's very little. Yeah. And I'm gonna to be talk. super picky today, but that's because that's what we're doing. <laughs> you know <laughs> but like yeah um so okay let's the, the the basics of ted lasso if you're not a ted lasso person uh jason sudeikis is is college football coach ted lasso who wins a division two championship and is hired by the new owner of afc richmond football club diamond dogs the, no no they're the greyhounds <laughs> yeah they are uh diamond dogs is something different we'll get to yeah. that 
But uh, when still we start talking dogs. about mental health, we'll start talking <laughs> about the Diamond Dogs. Uh, no, uh, so she hires him to coach the team that she has just won in a divorce from her very wealthy husband, who was a dick. Uh, so I, I, let me get out was, of the way is real quick. I watched the first episode and I thought, my God, this is just going to be an English version of Major League. Oh, OK. Which is she wants to kill the franchise. Yeah. And so she does everything humanly possible to kill the franchise. And it could have just been that. Yeah. But it is not. No. Uh, because she hired exactly the wrong person to destroy her franchise. Uh, ironically, uh, the guy, the, the his opening press conference is great when all the reporters are asking him about what he knows about soccer. You've never coached soccer at any level. You don't know nothing. Can you explain the offside rule? No, I cannot. Uh, but it's like uh, it's like porn. I I can't define it, but I'll know it when I see it. Uh, which actually <laughs> is a callback later. Um, which is great. This show is so this show is so self aware. Not in a navel gazing kind of way, um, but in a what has gone before way. Uh, and and again, we 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 said there's not a lot of fat to trim, and so anytime they reference something. You don't have to dig very far. You're like, oh, you're right. Like everything is Chekhov's gun, but in a happy way. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. You know, be, a just, be a goldfish. 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 Yeah. And uh, shut up, Terry Henry. Uh, that one of my favorites, <laughs> by the way. Uh, but no. So he. So yeah. So Ted Lasso and his assistant coach, Coach Beard. So uh, smart. By one of the, by one of the creators, Brendan Hunt. Uh, fly over to England and take over this franchise and. Coach Beard starts learning about soccer and, you know, Ted worries about his guys. Uh, and this is not, man, it's, it's hard. This show, look, I've said, I said it through all three, three seasons and anytime it struck me, it's like, this is your periodic reminder that Ted Lasso has no business being as good as it is. Yeah. This show is one of those shows that you look at and you go, this show should be dumb and not work and be canceled. And I think if it was on American television, it might have been canceled as opposed to a streaming service. Yeah. Yeah. I think I agree with you on that. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not here to like put down the American audience, but like, I feel like we have been spoon fed very specific programming on mainstream TV for so long that we don't really want to be challenged. We go other places to be challenged. We go to the streaming networks when we want something that's a little more than what is being fed to us, right? And so, yep. yeah, I think if it would have been on like, you know, NBC or whatever, I probably would have lasted two seasons, um, maybe. But maybe. I don't think they would have been able to do all the things that they wanted to do with it because there's so many constraints with mainstream television, um, with what they can produce and where they can go with it. And I think, you know, especially in season two, they had some episodes that could not have aired on mainstream TV. Um, they were so odd and so weird and so out there, but fit so well. Um, with the that, show. I, yeah. It's, yeah. It's th look, this show is not about soccer. First off, it's really not. Um, soccer unfortunately makes many appearances in this in this series but it's not about soccer um it is about the, this cast of characters and i man i don't want to say too much because i because we're going to get to the end of the series but uh it but it and we have players we have coaches we have fans we have reporters we have owners and uh, all of which occupy and it, and it, and then you said it in this weird world of of english football and they all have these very distinct places. Mm -hmm. And Ted Lasso comes in and fail. One more thing he does not understand about football. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, so he doesn't really, that doesn't really work for Ted. Ted is a, he, and, and in American football, he's what's called, a, he's a player's coach. Yeah. Uh, he's not an X's and O's guy. He's yeah. a, he's a player's coach, which is why Coach Beard is so essential to him. Uh, throughout this this series but but I think uh, soccer is so it, it's so perfect for his character because in soccer you can tie it's it's one of you know that is even though like, he hates that but he is a person that throughout the entire series 
is not concerned about winning. And, and it gets to the point where people are irritated. And it's almost the reason why his wife left him is that he does not pick a clear side and go. He picks the bigger picture, yeah. right? Which can be irritating if you're not in a good place in your life to have somebody that leaves it vastly open for your interpretation. And so I think that's why, why soccer or football is so great for him is because there is room for you to not be a, I don't know how, what kind of words I can say on this show. You can say a, anything you want on an this ass, show. An asshole coach that comes in and says, win, win, win. He can go in and say, no, we're going to make room to make a team. We yep. are going to grow as a team. And as long as you don't lose, you can tie, you know, yeah. but he's not too concerned about winning. He's more concerned about how you play the game. Right. And that is the game on the field and the game off the field. Yep. And you can you can say whatever you want, obviously, because we're talking. Hey, we're talking about Ted Lasso. Uh, <laughs> because uh, I'm going to get right to it. Because Roy Kent. Um, Roy Kent. Roy. Roy fucking Kent. Uh, he. Yes, he's here. Roy, he's he's there. there. He's, he's every, every fucking, fucking where. where. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, Roy Kent is my spirit animal. If I had a spirit animal. Oh my gosh. Uh, Roy Kent, the grizzled, the grizzled veteran on the team. Uh, whose career is winding down, but he is just the angriest, weirdly angry, but lovable guy uh, ever on this show. He he doesn't put up with any shit in the locker room, which is why he's the team captain. Um, he's accomplished, which is why the players respect him. And But he knows what's happening to his career. I mean, and we, we kind of see Roy's evolution across these three seasons. Uh, the end of season one ends one way, the end of season two ends one way and the series ends, you know, ends a third way. Uh, it's, it's an interesting, he might actually have the most complex character arc, uh, across the, across the three seasons. Maybe, maybe Jamie Tart, uh, the young brash up and comer who is constantly getting in Roy's face, uh, and whose theme song is actually Baby Shark, which drives me <laughs> insane. But uh, yeah, English football fans are weird. Yeah. Um, but love, well, no, it, 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 yeah, you can say whatever you want because we have Roy fucking Kent. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's no, there's no, this is definitely a podcast R from rated yeah. M for mature. Uh, if we're going to talk about that, but I, yeah, I, and is it just me or is Roy Kent most adorable when he's with his niece? Yeah, I think, <laughs> see, I don't see Roy as angry. Um, I mean, I get how a lot of people see that. And he does have moments where he is just this, like, growly. He doesn't have a lot to say nope. because he doesn't like nonsense. He wants to go. He wants to play the game. He wants to get out. He doesn't want to do all these emotions. <clears throat> and he's just kind of this, like this, until you make him a little bit uncomfortable. And then he just tells you like it is. He doesn't want to fucking do that. I right. don't want to do an interview. I don't want to join your diamond dogs. I don't want to, you know, do this. And so he is blunt. I would put him as he is blunt. Yes. But as he, he goes along and we see him with his niece and he is, he, when it comes to her, he, there Phoebe. is, there is no, yeah. When it comes to Phoebe, um, he makes no excuses for the fact that he is a softer person. And if you're going to comment about it, you can fuck right off. Yep. Like, like he is, he is her uncle and that's what he's proud of. And then as we see him in season three, um, he starts, we start to see his softer side. We start to see him open up a little bit more. Um, you know, we kind of break through that shell. Um, but he still, I like it. He is still him because right. some of the other characters, we see these arcs and they become other people and then they come back or they become other people and then they just keep going as other people. Mm. But Roy is Roy is Roy, which is, which I love. And that the, the characters in this show, even the side characters all have a purpose. It's not just comic relief. And I think that's what we usually get with uh, mainstream television is that you have one or two, maybe three main characters. And then you have all of these side characters that are there just to make us laugh or, yep. you know, to make us cry or whatever it is, but they're not, 
very deep, but every single one of the side characters in this show has a purpose, has a backstory. You love them. You feel like they're a part of you. And one of my favorite episodes is actually the Christmas episode. In at the Higginses? Two, at the Higginses. I love the Higginses. <laughs> but I just love how that whole episode was about making room in your life for the unknown and the unexpected in the unexpected and and that's okay for it to be un unknown and unexpected and if you just act like leslie like everybody is welcome all the time no matter what you can go to leslie you know yep. and you can go to his house and it doesn't matter we'll make a table out of a surfboard we will <laughs> you know like i just that episode to me sums up like the entire show it yeah, is, that's that was season two, I think. Yeah, yeah. And and that that's really when uh you see you you see the fruits of all of Ted's labor. Yes. Uh yes, really starting to grow. I mean, and the, the best part is in season three, uh, when uh Trent Krim, formerly of the independent, <laughs> uh the reporter best who, hair on the show. <laughs> his hair is perfect. Oh my god, I believe it is perfect. <laughs> Uh, yes, but Leslie Higgins, the director of football operations, who reluctantly goes along with the team owner, Rebecca, uh, her plan to hire Ted and destroy the club, but becomes this weird kind of Jimmy Cricket. Yes. Almost. I mean, you 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 kind of want that to fall to yet another character, Keely, Keely Jones, played by Juno Temple, um, who befriends, who's dating Jamie Tart. In the beginning. Jamie Tart befriends Rebecca and they become besties. Yeah. And so so she's she's like the that super supportive best friend who will still be honest, but Higgins is always like mm, and who can't lie. That's the best. He's he like can't. He can't. He's literally I, he's incapable. He'll gag. Oh. Which is kind of a <laughs> kind of a nod to uh to <laughs> knives out and poor Anna yeah. Armas who can't lie without being but he'll he always just kind of gets this really bad case of acid reflux when something is clearly wrong and he knows it yeah. uh, and he can't, he can't tell you what you want to hear. He has to tell you the truth. Uh, but yeah, so he hosts the players at, at Christmas and more players show up than normal yeah. uh, because they have a lot of, of African players who don't go home for yeah. Christmas. So they come over and they bring food and they all hang out, but it turns into this probably 75% of the team yeah. winds up at the Higgins is, is, um, with his wife and five boys, uh, again, ex you know, where are we going to put them all? We put them yeah. where we have room. We make room yeah. for them. At no point was there like, I can't believe you invited all these people. Like what it was just, nope. we're going to make, it's going to, we're going to make it happen, you know? Yep. And I feel like that is like this show in a nutshell is that things happen that we don't expect that we don't plan. Um, and then we just make it happen. And I think in a lot of our lives, we are so trying to plan everything out every little minute and we've got to win. We've got to do everything right. Um, we've got to have a plan. It has to look like this certain way. And we're all just like jumbled up into this knot. And then you bring in Ted Lasso, who's like, you know what? It's all going to work out somehow. I don't know how many times he says it's all right. It's a, it's all right. Show. And it's, it's all it's right. All, and it's all going to work out. He says that it's all going to work out. It's all going to work out. And then if you just believe in it, it's all going to work out. Believe. And believe. Um, and I know that sounds like some people like, that's just hokey. That's just, you know, it, if you it, explain this show to it someone, work. it doesn't work. It doesn't like you work. just, my sister was just like, you just have to sit down and watch it. And Dave and I sat down and watched the first season after it was already out yep. and everybody was already in. We watched, we binged it until three in the morning and we've watched the first season at least three times. I've watched the second season at least three times and I'm on my second round of the third season um, because it is just so smart. All of their little like one liners is just fantastic. Oh, I know it's, it's, <laughs> you know it it's so it the writing crew on this is just ridiculous uh but i mean this this is like lost levels of easter eggs of yeah. just weird book <laughs> references or movie or references. movie references or or a, a pop culture name just kind of flies by in the background or a or a soccer reference that you don't have to get but the soccer yeah. guy that knows it knows it yeah um 
it's just and again it's so intricate like literally 90 percent of what you see in the first two seasons is an easter egg is is Chekhov's gun for season three yeah. everything everything touches back everything yeah. is every character is important yeah. but so is every situation i mean i i caught it and i didn't one thing i i didn't realize that i that was important until someone else pointed it and i was like yeah i saw that but it didn't click in my head was ted give for Christmas gives everyone a present, all the team members a present. He yeah. gives them all different books. He wraps them yeah. up in their lockers. And Jamie Tart is this idiot, uh, idiot 23 year old footballer. And he just looks at it and he goes, well, and he throws it in the garbage. Season three rolls around and a thing happens and he goes to his locker and he takes yes. out that book. Yeah. Yep. The, the one that he threw in the garbage because it's yeah. all tattered, the cover's yeah. tattered, and he takes a thing out of it and contributes it so i mean everything in this show is just so yeah. they paid so much attention and maybe it's because the writers were locked in a, in a writing room for three years yeah i mean because they I couldn't think do it anything. was because they knew when you know when you're beginning and when you're ending um you it, you really think about what you have to wrap up when you have a series and you don't know it's just going to end when somebody else says it's going to end yep it's very it's written very differently it's just like when you have a trilogy and you know that's it you have mm -hmm. three movies these are the three movies there's no prequels there's not going to be any more sequels there is three you're very more thought you're you're much more thoughtful and i'm not saying it, it's better or it's not there are series right. that you know the sopranos was amazing you know and and that went on until they decided it wasn't going to go on anymore um but this is just there's just something magic about them knowing and being so smart and coming back around. And I wouldn't say that Jamie was stupid. I think Jamie was very much um, into himself. He did not care. He was self-absorbed. Yes. Um, because we do see in um, the second and the third season, um, especially when we, we meet his mom for the first time. Um, and and because we never, we always see his dad and hear about his dad. Yeah. But when we see his mom and where he came from and his neighborhood and, and all of that, like you see, he's a very thoughtful person, but because he looked up to somebody who was very self-absorbed, who had to be a certain way, he was a young kid who lived like this, yep. right? And as soon as those came off um, with the help of Ted, with the help of um, Keely with the help of Roy, um, Roy in Amazingly a big way, enough. especially in season three. Oh my God. Um, like he, he's one of my favorites, but like at first we had a couple of villains in the first season. We kind of had all of these different, we had Jamie who we kind of thought was a villain. We have Rebecca's asshole husband who is a Rupert. villain. Rupert, who is the biggest villain through the whole season. Yes. Um, and what a great villain he is. He's just a little snake. He's just yep. a little, um, but, but mainly they're kind of villains to themselves. Like Rupert is an ultimate villain, but, but Jamie, he was making himself the way he was. And then mm -hmm. he opened up and he was better. And the same with, um, the wonder kid. The one, uh, yes. I, I'm pretty sure I said wonder kid. Yeah. He, oh. he has a huge arc and a lot of people, that was a huge controversy, um in season two and moving into season three because a lot of people are like well so now we're gonna see him go evil and see why he was evil and then he's gonna come back and not be and i'm like well yeah that happens yeah like that happens and when you get caught up in sports and entertainment in a big job where you think you have to be a certain way to succeed it's very much star wars to me right you yeah. get the wrong mentor when you're down on your luck and you can totally turn to the dark side right but luckily yep. Like he came back, and to me, Roy Kent is is totally my Obi Wan Kenobi. Like you know, he's like this guy. Who nah, doesn't... he's he's honestly he's probably more Yoda. Nah, he's he my he, Obi -Wan. he would make you he would he he would make you put him on your back. <laughs> and, uh, but the so bite... does Obi Wan. He's like, let's go, let's work. No, you know. Anyways, but, but yeah. like it's very it's 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 very that, and you know, and I so I like, and I can't think of his name right now. Um, the wonder kid, what's his freaking name? Nate, 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 Nate the great. Nate, Nate, um, yes, Nate the great. Like I really liked what we saw of him because he started out very different, but even when they would show him at home throughout his transition in front of the teams, mm -hmm. 
he was still Nate, right? Yep. And, but what I loved so much about the final season is when they find out that Nate ripped up the sign. The, the sign. And they watch the video and they're like, everybody's like, let's release this. This could break him. And, you know, um, Coach Lasso says, why don't you guys go home? Go home and get some rest. And then we see at towards the end of the season, the the entirety of the video yeah. and the fact that Nate had to sit under that desk as they're celebrating and he had to sneak out the window and how humiliating that had to be and how much that was hurtful. And then he said, you know what? I hope people, and I'm getting this quote wrong. I should have written it down. Um, you know, forgive me, you know, yeah. don't, don't judge me by don't my judge me moment, my worst by, moment or whatever. By yeah. my worst moment. And I think that is so poignant because you can get online every day. Sometimes I jump in to the comment section <clears> online <throat> and I hate the world. I just think people are mean and horrible, but people they're not. They're just given the opportunity to be mean and horrible because that's what's popular out there in the world. And what that comment is, is like, stop judging people on their worst moment. Now I say that with a caveat of there are three things. If you hurt animals, if you hurt children, and if you kill people, like yeah, wow. if you're a serial killer, those three, you can totally judge people on that. But like, we all go through our lives and we make big mistakes and little mistakes. Yep. And, you know, there's a lot of people in the world being canceled right now because we are paying attention to their biggest mistake. Oh yeah. And that's not cool. Uh, no. it, it, and it's really not. So yeah. So Nate is a, is a, is a great character. Keely Jones, again, mm -hmm. another great character. She starts as a football groupie, basically social media modeling airhead. Uh, but that's not all she is, but she's never been given the opportunity. A lot of this is opportunities. It's, yep. it's, you know, nurture versus nature, right place, right time, right place. Where, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's, who that was know. Ted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so this, 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 again, you, you try to explain it to people and it, no, it, it doesn't work. Um, my favorite TV show of all time is Firefly. But if you explain it to people or you read yeah. it, it's like, no, that show can't no. work. It's like, oh, yeah. you're, you're so incorrect. That show no, can't It only work. worked for one season. So. It well, that fox. <laughs> but it was so uh, good. Again, which is why Ted Lasso probably wouldn't have lasted on American broadcast yeah. television. Or they'd have Americanized it somehow yeah. and ruined it. So but yeah, so I mean, Coach Beard, so he has smart. a very subtle character arc. Yeah, but it's it not is a, actually, it's... if you look at him at the beginning and you look at him at the end, he he's, he is almost two completely different people. It's but super it's so subtle, subtle and so smooth. He has what two episodes, I think, devoted to him. Oh, yeah. In There's season least, two, Beard, Beard right out. Oh, which my is gosh. Just ridiculous. That is, it's, it's, it's one of those. It's like a scene in your favorite movie that doesn't fit, but you love it so much. Mm -hmm. Like the song Shiny in Moana. Like that doesn't <laughs> belong there, but it's so weird and I love it so much. But yeah, that episode, every time I'm watching it, like Dave will come in. He's like, you're watching the weird episode. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> but it's a great episode. Yeah, it is. Absolutely it is. a great episode. Uh, but yeah, so this this show is is just, it's it's all over the place in a good way, but it's it's all over the place with a well-designed traffic flow uh because again because of the writing the writing is so good uh and we, it this thing you know, early on it you know there's a lot of fish out of water stuff there's you know kind of typical workplace sitcom stuff which all works again because yeah. the characters are so great um and they're and they're done so well and then it starts it it it, it brushes up against some topics um, and then it just in season three, you get to topics that are just, I mean, they're just in your face. Like this is the episode where we're going to, you know, this, this is the Ted Lasso after school special about social media. Yeah. You know, this is the Ted Lasso after school special about X, Y, or Z. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, the overarching theme of like the, what the last half of season two and most of season three is mental health. Yes. Um, Cause everyone in this show is damaged yes. somehow. Yeah. Um, everyone uh, is damaged. They have their flaws. They have their issues. And then, until they confront them all, we don't, you know, they don't get to grow into the people that we see by the end. Um, and it's never, there's never an aha moment for any of these characters. It's a slog um, to this. Uh, 
but through that we get another great recurring character for the second half of the season which is dr sharon yes the uh the psychologist that comes in who uh, has her to, own issues <laughs> who, only, who remember she only comes in to help danny danny rojas uh-huh who i but, love so much oh my god so <laughs> yes danny rojas the mexican football star who comes to play that's some who great kills moments. earl oh. <laughs> on a penalty kick he kills the greyhound mascot <sighs> that runs after a bird uh during a penalty <laughs> kick and he and and honestly what's what's kind of funny is when that if when you see that episode the first time is you see that bird take off yeah and your first thought is he's going to kill the bird yeah which is a callback to baseball when J randy johnson vaporized a yeah. seagull <laughs> vaporized it on a pitch um but it's not the bird it's the dog that chases him and he kills the dog and he can't kick he can't kick toward he can't kick he can't kick a soccer ball yeah. so they bring in dr sharon to help him through you know Football realizing you dead. weren't trying to kill earl uh which is i mean because you so yes because you watch danny rojas go from football is life football is to death. uh football is death <laughs> yeah back to football is life which is great because yeah it's it's him being alive which is great but then she kind of sticks around and helps a bunch of other other characters but not ted for the longest time because ted is damaged yeah ted is probably more damaged than anyone except jamie tart and he gets uh, called out in season three yes yeah he gets he called out yeah he um, wants to go he wants to actually date he doesn't really want to date no but he <laughs> you're, it up. You're, a me, you're a hot mess <laughs> you're a mess am i a mess you guys yes no he's a work in prog mess <laughs> uh which was great but yeah so this but hey look if you enjoy what you're seeing and hearing on the visually stunning movie podcast why not take a second to click subscribe if you're on youtube click follow wherever you're listening to us uh you know follow us on twitter at vs movie podcast same over on facebook if you're on uh instagram it's visually stunning movie podcast that would be awesome for us we appreciate you listening and now let's get back to the show uh we you know so mental health becomes a a great deal which which you know they start touching on that early on when we get the uh, uh you know diamond dogs version one yeah which is uh just you know ted beard nate and higgins getting together to talk about their problems you know just kind of on a spur in the moment thing hey can i ask a question and it becomes as everything has to be a thing with ted so it becomes this formal thing that the diamond dogs and they, they talk about stuff and you get to see men talking about what they're thinking ladies uh which i'm sure will shock many ladies what men are thinking about uh and eventually they dra they drag poor roy into it you know the least <laughs> available guy uh, and i what i i honestly i think the best mental health line in this having never been to therapy myself what you can express you can express your opinions on that in a minute uh is when 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 roy is in there and he gets through something and they're just he's like wait a minute you mean to tell me that sometimes this is just talking about stuff deciding nothing happens and nothing changes and they're like yeah, yeah. pretty much yeah that's how it works yeah and he's just like fuck yeah. that that's so like literally sometimes this is what women say we don't need you to fix it we just need to say it out loud we just need to get it out of our brain and into the world and then we just say it and then it's just it's out there yeah there's you, 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 you the 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 girl talk between between keely and, <laughs> and and rebecca is vastly different than the diamond dog talk or the locker room talk or the off locker room talk uh that you get from the guys and uh, we were talking about rupert earlier and you were trying to oh rupert so this and that and the other thing and it's like yeah do you know how guys define that but it, girls women will break this down and they will analyze how evil rupert is guys are at the point where we look at that guy and we know that guy we just look at it and, yeah god he's a dick and yeah, it says exactly dick. the same thing <laughs> but but god, yeah when guys go yeah he's a dick that's exactly what we're saying yeah. but we've just con <laughs> we've just distilled it down to four little letters yeah he's just a dick and there's i mean because dude don't be a dick is one thing but dude yeah he's a dick that's a completely separate argument you know it's it's like fuck it has many uses uh <laughs> but yeah rupert rupert rupert's a dick and and guys are just like 
there's literally we can't fix that sorry i mean yeah no, all we can do can. is look at him and go or go ladies he's a dick and and hope you understand before you get there yeah um but i it's it's fun so yeah so we get a lot of different viewpoints you know guys you'll learn a lot about maybe kind of how women talk about things and how they look <laughs> at things um and women I, there's a lot of there's a lot of real in that locker room and in that management uh i felt i i felt personally attacked by roy's retirement speech uh because that is a hard thing for someone who has done something for a very long time to say i'm done yeah uh, and no muss so yeah. uh, i i kind of felt bad for roy I, I i felt i felt attacked there but that's i almost wish they'd have given him a better like an actual retirement speech at the press conference but but by the time you get to where he does the press conference uh after the uh mcadoo fan yeah. attack incident that's basically what he would have said in his retirement speech that would have been the tone of his retirement speech yeah um and i that shows a lot of growth on on poor poor roy's part i, I keep calling poor, poor i keep calling poor poor roy because roy feels like he's poor roy through i mean I, the the what the one part where he keeps saying things he's standing next to ted ted will say something in the locker room and he'll say something and about the third one he's like he says something and he's like god i hate what you're doing to me because he's tedding <laughs> the whole time yeah he's, yeah he's he's either tedding or bearding yeah with what he's saying the whole time and he just god i hate what you're doing to me um because you know he can't help himself because you just yeah. can't if you're around ted that's the way you become but roy like i said i i love roy i like his arc i think it's one of the better arcs uh in the show which is which is also funny because uh brett goldstein who plays roy was started as the writer for roy and wasn't going to be roy but he decided as he was writing him he goes i really should ask if i can be roy uh and he had he sent a video to the other writers of him doing scenes as roy going it, I guess, you know, if, if this sucks, just burn it. Pretend you didn't see it. I love it. And they're all that's like, awesome. they're like, Oh my God, you're totally Roy. And so that's yeah. how he got to be Roy. That's awesome. Um, and yeah, but, but the casting on this show, we, you know, we talk about the characters, the casting, casting anywhere is important. I mean, we both have Marvel posters everywhere uh, behind us, you know, Marvel's casting, you know, traditionally everyone compliments how they match. Um, uh, L Jeremy Swift plays Leslie Higgins, who is this kind of little nebbishy, you know, he, he's, he kind of starts as a bean counter and then he becomes a CFO uh, when Rebecca takes over to help her destroy the team. Um, but uh, Nick Muhammad, who plays Nate, auditioned for that role. Oh, that would have uh, been very different. Bill Dunster, who plays Jamie Tart, auditioned for Higgins. Oh, so wow. That is, uh, but now they wound up as Nate and Jamie Tart, and it's like, yeah, clearly this, these were the correct choices. But it, yeah. again, it just goes to highlight how important, it's not just what's on the page, it's how it comes off the page. Yeah. And the casting becomes so important. I mean, this show was nominated and won uh, 642,000 Emmys, I think, over time, over its three seasons. I mean, what? I think That's one year it was lot. nominated. Yeah, it, it seems like a lot for three seasons, but apparently it's a very good show. Uh, no, I, I think it, I think, I think the number I saw was it was nominated for like 20 Emmys its first season. Wow. Which is just, yeah. I don't even know how, I don't crazy. Are there that many categories for Emmy? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Emmys plus just kind of make categories. Up. I, I know. Plus they probably had a couple double dips. It's writers, it's actors, it's supporting actors, actors it's, it's episodes, it's like ensembles. ensembles it's, it's, yeah. it's, there's a bunch of things. So it, it yeah. won a lot. And a lot, I, again, the construction or the presentation, you know, the, the way you build that blueprint is just as important yeah. as the blueprint. Yeah. So uh, the casting in this is just so great. And then the rest, I mean, there's so many great characters in this. Uh, Sam Obasanya is great. Even, oh, I love and I hate Sam Obasanya. Sam, Sam, it's just, he, God, he's just so lovable. Uh, but again, you know, Danny Rojas is Cristo Fernandez. Uh, but, uh, and Rebecca, he had some I, great moments. Let's, let's stay on Danny Rojas for a minute. Oh, yeah, let's stay on Danny Rojas for a minute. And in uh, season three, they all get to go play for the team of the country teams. that they're from, right? They're In national international teams. play. And when he goes to play on his Mexican team, right? He turns in because I don't know if you've if you've ever watched um football, but watching a football game in Mexico, Brazil, 
England, United States, all very different, right? Yes. And if you want to play serious, like backyard soccer, football, like Mexico is no holds barred. Their yep. footwork is faster. They're like, everything is faster. And he turns into this like whole different persona and wax poor um, Zero. Zero. Slash Van Dam uh, slash Van Zorro. Dam <laughs> yes. His, his teammate is the goalie for AFC Richmond who yes. goes to play goalie for the Canadian team who he has yes. to play against the Mexican team with Danny Rojas. And Danny immediately, and once that's announced, he just. He switches into we're not on Danny teams Rojas, anymore. Mexican I'm on this hormone. team. And then as soon as he gets back to his his regular team, he's just all Danny yeah. Rojas again. It was I a crazy that time. Was, it was a I crazy it was, time. But it was so much fun to see yeah. that. Uh, but th I mean, that's great. Uh, Zorro was great. I even love they got yeah. uh, 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 Rebecca's best friend, Sassy. Sassy pops up uh, as Led's as Led's yeah. as Ted's hookup. Uh, Ted is her booty call. I won't. Yeah. Say, she's yeah. not Ted's booty call. No, Ted is, Ted her, is booty her, call, her booty call. But she yeah. has a daughter who is Rebecca's goddaughter. Yeah. Um, even that kid. Yeah, it's just so. I and mean, she, she loves Sam Obasanya, which is awesome. Yes. Which I just think is hilarious. Yes. Um, Ted's mom comes over for an episode. We uh, and, and just, we have Rebecca's mom, who is Rebecca, this crazy lady. Oh my god! And her psychic Tish. Yeah. Uh. So yeah. So it, the even even the characters that only pop up in one episode, yeah, or two episodes, characters. Um, they come in with a purpose. I mean, and they do in other shows, but normally it's to. I don't know, provide some, I don't, it's, 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 it's a like I dynamic. said earlier, it's to fight, it's provide tears or comedy and that's it. But here are the side characters, they bring them in and it's filling in this thread that's going to move into something bigger. Yep. It's not, they're very thought out. It's very important. These characters. <clears throat> yeah. It's, it's just so wonderfully done. And we get to season three. Uh, Ted is now single Ted. Uh, his his wife and ex wife and son still live in Kansas, and she's seeing their therapist. Their their ex therapist. They yeah yeah that, that's a that's a weird set of problems. Um, and you know Ted's having to deal with this. He's dealing with Nate being gone, coaching Man City, or wait Manchester United. Um, Ham Ham West Ham West, West Ham. Ham. Oh my God, it's soccer player. People are going to be all over me now. Uh, yes, the Hammers. Rupert's team, which is the best part. So we get we get many levels of conflict there. Um, but we see the team start to gel. We get the uh we get the Amsterdam episode, which yeah. which really cements Jamie and, and Roy's friendship. Yeah. I begrudging camaraderie, I, think, I, think I guess. Like respect. <laughs> yeah. Respect for each other. It yeah. is, but you know, we get we get Ted finally grasping X's and O's yeah in a weird way but not but it, not even really for ed it's 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 a through z in alphabet soup yeah uh so and you know and you know beard is out doing beard stuff uh and uh even that episode i don't know if you caught it with the team didn't have a curfew yeah uh, and they were just they spent all night deciding yeah. what they were going to do <laughs> did you catch what they did and were that callback yeah well, and, because that was so that's so important to the team. Well, that well that they, had, they they wound up on they what they were they were either going to go to the red light district, yeah. they were going to go to a rave, they were going to take a bus like two hours to a party that one of their players' cousins yeah. was DJing at, and yeah. they were going to be supermodels there. Uh and so they spent all night trying to figure it out and they settle on pillow fight in the hotel ballroom. Yep. Which is a callback to season one yes. for team movie nights because their yes, options movie were movie night. night so, yeah, were movie night or pillow fight, and they yeah. always chose movie night. And when you rewatch season one, you hear it. All right, guys, but first time you once once you pick pillow fight, you'll never go back. Yeah, and <laughs> season three, they finally go pillow fight. And I was just like, nice callback. Yeah, it uh, it's so just good. just the little stuff makes makes the show totally worthwhile. I like I said, I, I, I finished my second watch and i'm sure i'll watch it again uh it because literally you can watch the whole series in a weekend it's like yeah, what, 12 you, episodes 12 and episodes you'll see and, things that like once you've watched it and then you go back because you know what's happening you go back and you see how they set those things up and it makes it even more 
um, exciting because it's just so smart. Um, you know, I mean, even how, you know, they set up uh, Beard and Ted's relationship, like all the little things that they do and you see how important all of those little things are to move along, mm -hmm. you know, and then in the last season we have everyone doing it they're all in the office and they're throwing out the julie andrews references which is something that only ted and beard did in the first season is they would be walking together and they would throw out a da da da, da and it would become this you know whether it was a movie or two books yep. or a character or whatever and now you've got you know everyone in their little group and the diamond dogs okay like i know you hate musical references so early in the morning and he's like you know, no, it's Julie Andrews. Like we, you know, and so we'll, yeah, we'll we'll allow it. <laughs> we'll allow it. And and I just thought that was so much fun because he, Ted really does have them all thinking this fun, different way now instead of just being here with what success means. Like mm. them in a room throwing out deep cuts of Princess Diaries. Julie Andrews right. is, <laughs> you know, a fun moment. So yeah, it is. And and uh, even in season three, though. Uh, when they're changing stuff, Roy is still Roy. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the episode is called "The Ties That Bind," I believe, yeah. with the red the red thread. Yes. Which is, I mean, just and then after that fails, it's like, we tie one to five other guys. <laughs> it's just like that was so bad and so funny. It's just like. <laughs> it, yeah, it, it, well, wait, even when they're on the sideline, Ted doesn't understand. This is so that they understand and apply. Yeah, sure, let's go with that. That's what Roy says. Yeah. Let's, let's no, go. No, I that. just. <laughs> no, that's, just, that's not what he's doing. He's just doing it. Um, yeah. And then, you know, we get the the breakthrough leadership moment from Jamie. Yeah. In the, you guys have to stop playing to me and you have to start playing through me. Yes. And then he explains how that works. And, and then you see it. Um, and someone pointed out that his hat changed. He walked yeah. around two and a half seasons with a hat that just said icon on it because yeah. he was an icon. You know, he was going to change it. And by the end of the season, it said, I cog, you know, because he was one piece of this oh, bigger machine. Yeah. And, you know, and it, but but those kind of moments, and you know, and the, the penalty kick, you know, yeah. Jamie take, gives it to, to Danny. Danny gives it to the captain yeah. who doesn't take penalty kicks because he can't. It, that's not his thing. I, that's yeah. not Mac Isaac's thing. So uh, it, it's just weird, which, by the way, was a great scene because you see it. And you're like, oh, my God, that's terrible. It's like, yeah. how are we going to recover from that? And they're like, wait, they're looking at something. And then you see it, you're like, oh, my God. That was, <laughs> he totally destroyed it. Yeah. But, you know, there's just, there's, there's so much, uh, there's just so much stuff, you know, and Ted isn't superstitious until he is. Yeah. Uh, you know, like the, the, what, they started with uh, seven or nine straight ties yeah. in season three of the third season. He's, or yeah, the third season he's there or something like that. And, and he goes, oh, it's, it, this is it's karma for I was wishing for a tie in that last game last season. Yeah. When when, when I said I don't do tie, we don't do ties because he, you know that you know, there's so much stuff that Ted says that you know I you know I don't believe in ties. That's just weird. He goes, wait, we we started in the Premier League and we got relegated to the Championship League and we got back, promoted <laughs> back to the Premier League. But if we win this, we can go up to the league that's called the Champions League. Almost the same name, completely different, makes no sense. None of this makes any sense. So, you know, he doesn't understand ties, but he wished for a tie. They didn't get it. And then, they, you know, Karma gave him like nine straight ties to open the season. So, uh, and, and he, you know, the, that, you know, he, you know, that's the universe. He goes, I wished for it and I shouldn't have. You know, yeah. I deviated and that's on me. You know, yeah. it's like, you know, he stepped on a crack, you know, and he broke yeah. the team's ability to do anything. Um, but you know, then he figures it out. But this show is just again, it it has no business being this good because it's funny, it's it's serious, it's poignant, um, and it's genuine. It's genuine. It's insightful. It's it's all of these things, and there's no way something that that's trying to do as much as this one tries to do should succeed at pulling any of it off. Yeah. much less 99% of it yeah. uh, that this actually does. And it's just so insanely well put together that again, it's I, I, I'll watch it again. I, I 
I work from home. I'll turn it on just for the background noise at this yeah. point, you know, like, like oh, that, 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 that's what happened. I can hear it. That, that's what's yep. going on. Uh, and you know, Oh, wait, rewind. I want to watch that scene again. So, you know, cause it's, there's just so many good moments and there's a lot of visual stuff in it too. There's a lot of, there's a lot of visual nods, uh, forward and backwards as you go through it again. It's just, it's just one of those rare pieces and you're probably right. It's Apple committed to three C or they sold Apple three seasons. Apple said, okay, three seasons. And they said, okay, we have our three seasons. Boom. But you know what we didn't see? And I find it ironic uh, because we see, a, a, I've watched a lot of movies. We did not see a single COVID episode. Yeah, there was I, I zero think... mention. Of, yeah, and I think that's okay because I, they were, I, I, I yeah, think they were dealing with other things. So. They were, but I, I, well, a lot of things, a lot of shows and movies did it. Yeah. And then use that as a talking point, which. Yeah. And I like that they didn't because the first season we were all kind of over, you know, when the first season came it. out, we needed something to take us out of that moment. And so it helped us not even think well, about it. Five years from now, you can watch Ted and not be reminded of COVID. Yeah. Um, so I think it actually lends to its staying power. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's ability to kind of hang around uh for the for the long term i think i think that was a smart choice not to go there but i think the other topics that are that are handled in single episodes like the the social media episode yeah. um the coming out episode um yeah. those however they age it's one episode and it's not these really long arcs that you're going to have to argue about or complain about. There'll be one episode that you can either watch again and again and again, or one episode you can skip or whatever your thing is, yeah. but the lessons are, I mean, but the lessons are, are applicable. Yeah. Um, so the, again, I, th I think overall, I think those episodes felt like things that they felt they needed to specifically address um, in a more direct manner. As well, opposed to like meant the mental health theme going through was more, you know, all of these characters, they, they designed them to be broken and then they had to fix them. So it became this kind of continuous movement through the, the mental health spectrum. And they're all on it at different points at different times through the show. But then wider issues they were able to address, you know, kind of point blank like that. And, and yeah. so, so they, they used both methods of looking at different things and, and, yeah. and it works really well. Yeah. I think, you know, I really like that they gave, um, Ted anxiety because Ted is this guy who always sees everything on the bright side. Right. And you can't shake him. You can't shake him. And then all of a sudden he has this anxiety attack and then yep. he has another anxiety attack and then he has another anxiety attack. And it's because he is not, um, looking he's looking at everyone else and helping yeah. everyone else find themselves but he's not looking inward and when we get to the coming out episode it's the same thing because we think that if we share um our innermost secrets with people even if we think those people are on our side they're on our team that we're going to be looked at different that they're not going to accept us and i loved that episode so much because his team captain who was also one of his best friends was angry at him and the whole time he thinks he's angry at him because he's gay. Yep. He's angry at him because he he couldn't he didn't think he could tell him. Yep. Like I'm supposed to be your best friend and you think that if you tell me this that I'm not going to love you? Like where is our friendship? Yep. Right? And so I just thought that was so great and then having um you know the episode with Keely and that just devastating, you know, social media like I think the that great will awakening. Last, that will last a long time because that's the thing is like that argument of, well, you shouldn't have made the video. If you made the video, then you should expect something bad to happen. That's not ever should be the argument. And I know across the board, people can get angry. Well, you shouldn't make the videos. Well, maybe I'm in love with someone and this is how we want to share our moment. And just because I'm a celebrity or I'm an athlete or I make a video or I send pictures of myself does not give anyone else the right to say, well, they deserve what they got because they made that decision or because you're famous or because you're an athlete or because, or because, or because what I do in my private life does not give anybody the right 
to post that on the internet. If I am a woman and I decide to take nude pictures of myself and send them to the person that I'm endeared to at this moment, because that's what I want to do, then I should be able to do that without having someone share that, even if it's the person I sent them to. Yep. Right. That, so that like whole, and I know women see it a little more differently than men see it and that's fine. But I loved how her teammate, cause she's not a player, but she's a member of that team. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they found out Keely was on that list and their reaction to you better get on your phones right now and delete. you better delete all that content because, yeah. and that and is, I love the debate about it. It's like, oh, her yeah, I... and it's coming out. It's like, it's his coming out and her coming out at the same time. You've got two very big stories happening at the same time. And, and I just love the reaction of it. And I love that Jamie went and checked on her and I love that, you know, I mean, he used it to his benefit later, well, yeah, <laughs> but did. like that's Jamie, right? right? But to me, I think that is always going to be a thing. Like I saw a meme um, on the internet the other day about LeBron James and about how he would like to use the fact that he's LeBron James to bring some awareness to some things that he thinks are important to him. And other people are like, just shut up and shoot. Yep. A trained SEAL can do what you do. One, no, they can't. Two, just because you're an athlete does not mean that you don't have a right to an opinion. That is your job. It is not who you are. It is your job. I have a job. You have a job. We all have the right to talk about things that are important to ourselves. Keely is the same kind of, she is, these people in the world, because of what her job is and how she has taken her job, see her as this thing over here. She's posters on people's walls. Mm -hmm. She's, you know, in their spank bank. She is like, whatever. But when we see Keely doing her other job or at home with her friends or with her, the people that she loves, she is a very insightful, caring person, yep. right? Does she, like, just because she's a celebrity, no, it's okay for us to share that. So I think this topic across the board um, will will stand the test of time. And I know people are just seething at what they want to say about what I just yeah, said. Yeah. And that's why it will last long because there are vast differences in opinion on these. Well, things. yeah, the, the debate in the locker room was great. Well, what if it, what if it's whatever? Well, what if it's artistic? Well, what does that mean? Well, it's black yeah. and white and you can't see their face. It's like, ah, no, you got to delete it. Yeah. yeah, It's like, doesn't it doesn't matter i just i thought that was that was <laughs> that, cause, cause, well, well wait what about this well what about that what about the yeah. other thing and it's yeah. like i see your point but yeah i see your point it's yeah. <laughs> it's 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 a wonderful <laughs> argument to have but yeah. in the end i just love that you no know, the, the team decision captain Get rules boom this is what yeah. happens you know and what is it i i was shocked that jamie was the first well no jamie was the second it's one like I got, he, yeah. he agreed with sam sam goes every time i break up with a girl i give her my phone and tell her to delete anything she doesn't yeah want. and they're like what yeah jamie's like yeah I, I just delete that crap all the time too yeah and it's like well and what? jamie it's out jamie? of sight out of mind right he's on to yeah, the next like, oh, you're so it what? fit yeah. very well yeah he's just on to the next bimbo but i just thought i thought that was um a really really good episode um and and you know and then and it when, sets the stage for the next episode. Yeah. And then when Keely's girlfriend, her girlfriend, who is the owner of this, she's the funding of her company. Yep. Um, it's not her boyfriend or her fancy white guy somewhere. It's her girlfriend that ghosts her and basically breaks up with her because it's not kosher to the lifestyle that she's living well what, so to me breaking those gender norms across the board for me what they do in this show there are so many gender norms broken in this series um it's so great that's well and let, let's not forget she doesn't ghost her because of the thing she doesn't break up with her she breaks up with her because she won't apologize for it yeah yeah she no won't, that, but she that's won't, the norm she won't beg like for usually women won't tell other women right to say but it, that but you, what's funny is, is yeah. that that goes to the argument of, you know, ready, here it goes, cancel culture. Yeah. It's like never apologize. If you do something and someone and people get angry, it's like don't apologize. The last thing you should ever do is apologize because it's not enough. You can't apologize enough. Just shrug and go, there it is. And that's all you can do. I nothing I, mean, you, I can do you, can you take can it back. You can apologize, but you need to do better. 
Like, well, I think it's good to say, I don't think in this instance, Keely needed to apologize, no, right? No, no. But, and, uh, 100%. but let's say, let's say Jamie's the one that put it out there. Oh, Jamie yeah, no. would need to apologize and then Jamie would need to do better. Um, but I do think depending on what the situation is, I'm glad she didn't apologize. If they would oh, yeah. have made her apologize, I would have stopped watching the show. But the fact that it was her girlfriend, a lesbian girlfriend, who in, in my mind, um, because of what I have been around and the people I have been around, I don't think I have one lesbian friend who would ever ask me to apologize for something like that, no matter what. And that's the normal in my mind, right? right? That I can't speak for everyone. Not every gay person is the same. Not every lesbian is the same. Not every straight person is the same. Not every white man named Mark is the same, right? right. But we we automatically put those things in my mind. So I was so appalled because in my world, that would never happen. But I loved that it happened because everyone is different all the time, no matter what, right? You yep. can't say one type of person is always going to be this way. And one type of person is always going to be this way. Like Samuel Bassanya, literally giving up millions of dollars. He could have had everything in the world he ever wanted, but he gave it up because it was the right thing to do. And then his team stood behind him. Jamie right. First. Yes. So all these things where you would see these norms across the board are broken. I love it. Like it's yeah. just the, it's an ongoing theme throughout the show. And sassy, like again, she has a side piece. She's not the side piece, right? right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, Ted is. I at, at some point you wanted her to go. Ted, call me in five years. You know what I mean? And, and it's like, yeah, I want to see that in five years. No, when, when I wanted to see him and Rebecca together. Everyone wanted to see her. And, and <laughs> but I'm really together. glad on how it ended. I yeah, really that was, like I really like the ending. It was yeah. nice. Even the psychic got all the callbacks. Yeah. Which is yeah. hilarious. So, yeah. What is going did you and what was the other My thing? My tail yeah. feathers are showing. Uh, the uh the little girl at the end in the final yes. episode. Did you notice yes. that was little Rebecca from the mirror? Somebody pointed that out. They got the same little girl to play little Rebecca in the mirror. Oh, it's, so it's like, God, this, this show, it's like, no, and it had to be it, intentional. I thought it looked, oh yeah. Yeah. There are no accidents. No, there's, there's really not. There's, there's, there's no accidents. So this show is just so, so, and very rarely does it feel there's the word. Yeah. People are preachy. Yeah. It's, it's, it just kind of lays stuff out there and you can yeah. deal with this. It's, however you want to deal with it. Yeah. So it's, it's, man, it's just, it is, it is just a really, man, I can't believe some, man, one episode in season three is rated at a 6.6. <laughs> Which episode is it? We'll never have Paris. Ah. Uh, ah, uh, yes. And that was the leak episode. Yeah. I wonder, that's just weird. I don't think it is, honestly because of what we just talked about like the what is so cool about the conversation that we're having right now is that if you listen to mark's show and if you've ever seen my <clears throat> show mark and i um are very different when it comes to um would you say like our social and political outlooks? yes okay well um I, I i'm sure if we did a political podcast we would find way more common ground than it looks like but yeah there, yeah there there are certain things that we don't 100 percent agree on yeah, we just we there, oh, and there no, are a lot somebody of, doesn't agree with me. Oh. Yeah, and, and there are a lot of movies that we see opposite on. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to Ted Lasso and all of these different things across the board, and I would say that this is a pretty progressive show. Uh um, allow it. Um <laughs> like it's it op it doesn't there isn't a door that they don't open, right? Because of whatever. Whereas right. if you were on a conservative show, there would be a lot of doors that you just don't open that door. You're going to leave that over there. You might reference the door, but you're not opening the door. Right. In Ted Lasso, sometimes we're running through the door. Um, <laughs> and We're hitting our head on the top of but the But again, door like you said, it's not preachy. We're not shoving things down your throat. I think the only thing that they shove down your throat every single episode and 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 it's not even shoving it down your throat there it's more like um we're being uh molded right into the try and have a better outlook on life 
Yeah. Try and forgive people. Try and understand you're a person in progress. Like these are the things that Ted Lasso tries to tell us every single episode. Um, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with showing us that people that we think are bigger than life are flawed. And so your flaws are okay. I mean, Danny Rojas says it in his in in one sentence when he's when he's videotaping his uh, his thing for the dating app. Oh, yeah. He says, "My favorite thing about women." Are there flaws? You know, yep. it's, it's, and, and I think that's everything that the show is about is that everything that the characters end up loving about the other characters are the way that they're different or the way that they've messed up or the way that they've bounced back. You know, it's, so I'm okay that that's what they're shoving down our throat, but there's every kind of relationship. There's parental relationships. There's best friend relationships. There's awkward dating relationships. You know, there's there's yep. all these different things um, that that I that I think they touch on. They do, and uh, addiction, depression. You well, know, addiction. It, so speaking of addiction, let's talk about Coach Beard. Yeah. Um, who goes through this entire show drinking <laughs> mushrooms. Uh, but then we get to the second or third to last episode and you actually learn how he became coach beard. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, what, you, you, you're not quite over, but, and Jane, I don't think helps that to be fair. I don't think Jane, <sighs> In the that end is really toxic good for relationship. Him. That toxic relationship is not my favorite. I don't know, I don't know how that's going to go, but, but yeah. So, I mean, but that's, that, that actually, that little exchange between him and Nate, that was like uncharacteristically dark. Yeah. That, that little monologue. It's like, yeah, that is like really. And then, and then he, he gets to the end and he's like, I offer you a job. The life part is up to you. And it's yeah. just like, Ooh, you know, I, it's like, that, but it, it, but it still doesn't take it all the way out of the dark. But it, I I think that's really one of the, the like darkest moments of the entire show. Yeah. I mean, there's the, the there's like down, you know, there's you know the the social media stuff and Keely. There's what another th so Jamie's you know, dad. D Jamie's dad in the locker room. I mean, that's dude. That's just that's it that's, that, that hurt watching i, I that. it hurts if, thinking about it if i if if you were a therapist and we were talking about this episode i'd be talking about my dad uh but <laughs> yeah but then you get to that and it's just like that's like that's like dark dark that's like you know life ending dark but it, uh, like it it drives home that i hope we don't get that's how he got beard to get off of his case because he says i hope we are not all um uh yeah, judged at our judged by, moment or, yeah. by our by our worst moment, and that's like beard. It doesn't, and that that line doesn't make sense until, until. later. That I episode, mean, it does. We're all it? like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, it totally makes I sense. That. And, and then you get to the end, and you're like, see that we're like, oh, damn okay. it, Ted. Yeah, you know, yeah. He, Ted knows the right thing to say to everyone, except himself. And yeah. thank God for Doctor. Well, he can tell himself those things all day long, but he doesn't practice what he preaches. Right. That's the biggest thing. Uh, and what was it? The one, and he knows when not to talk. Right? Early in the season, they're like, "We're we gonna go out and talk." He goes, "No." And then Roy comes in to yeah. the locker room when he's still a player. Yeah. And and it's like, or no, Roy comes in and goes, "You gonna say anything?" He goes, "No." When they're bullying, yeah. they're bullying the kit man. They're, 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 they're bullying they're, Nate. <laughs> bullying yeah. Nate. You gonna just say something? He goes, "No." Yeah, and it's they've like, got to figure it out themselves. Well, what's what's hilarious is that Ted, it's, he knows it needs to be addressed. Yeah. And he could address it. Yeah. The but problem is, is it's it. not the same as if it comes from the locker room side of it, not the managerial side yeah. of it. And even, even Roy knows that. But yeah. Roy, again, that's it's a line Roy doesn't want to cross. Well, that he, he doesn't want to be responsible. Roy just wants to play. Yeah. He doesn't want to be he sees everything that happens and, and Ted empowers him to then be the coach. Right. He almost, he almost shames him into being the coach, no, I think which he is empowers nice. him. I think well, when he comes up on the, when he comes up on the sidelines, yeah, you had me at coach. <laughs> it's like, it's like, ah, ah, yep. There it is. So many cute, cute little flourishes yeah throughout the show they love to reference the movies and the music and everything else it's i like, love the way that jamie says words like when they're down in the sewer and he's like what's down here? like it's poopy it's poopy 
and they're back in the locker room and they're talking to guys guys it's just poopy just let it poopy. go it's poopy it's like oh my god yeah it's just again it's it's the 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 way the way you build it has to equal the way you design it and this yeah. this does that so it's it's yeah. really great that's fun to talk about yeah <laughs> Yeah, I mean, there's just so many. I mean, there's obviously there can be a whole podcast just on every episode. Uh, there, were, I'm sure there, there was. There is, you yeah. know, um, because there's so much to get into, you know, um, even getting into, uh, you know, if we got more into everything that was going on um, behind the scenes of the teams of each of the teams and the different coaches from yeah. each of the teams, like they would, they kind of showed their different personalities. And I love when he, when you get all of the men together in one room and then you have Rebecca. Oh, all right? the, yeah. All the team owners are there. Are they going to the build the owners. super league? Yeah. Yes. And, and I love that so much, but then like Rebecca's ex, I mean, he, to the end, we didn't even get into that. Like he's doing some very shady things at his organization and he was do, he's been doing those shady things for the entire time. And that is somebody who does need to be canceled because it's not a one-time mistake. This is who this person is across the board is going to continue to be this person. Um, and I love how all the women at the end come together and we're like, so like he did it to you and he did it to me and he's doing it to her and you know, we're all going to come together, but Rebecca still doesn't throw down the gauntlet. She lets it all play out the way nope. that it needs to. She picks the Ted way. And then the book was changed from the Ted Lasso way yep, to, to, Lasso, to the, the Richmond, Richmond way. way, which was great. Yeah. Okay, on Ted's request. Well, to change the title. Yeah. yeah it's, it's not, it's not about me. It never was. Yeah. And it's like, true. I mean, 100%. yeah, I mean, he sparked it, but it's about the team because the yeah, team but again, then took over because even when they got uh who's the big star player they got i forgot his name zava zava even zava. when they get zava because i almost didn't love that storyline when it was happening but um it basically proves that they can have this big huge you know star player but if they're not playing like the team that they've been that they've put together they're not going to win yep you know they don't need zava they don't need ted they have everything that they need now to play and to win. Yep. And that's, man, just, God, this show is so good. Yeah. So good. Um, <laughs> let's stop talking about Ted last. Okay. Time. Val, where can everyone watch you on your 600? I mean, I, I have like, I am Val Cameron is pretty much everything. Like that's me on Facebook. That's me on Instagram. That's me on my YouTube. Um, and if you go to any of those places, there will be links to other things. Um, what see with Val.com is where I have my written reviews and my video links to what I've done with you, Mark, with my other podcasts, with, uh, channel four, good things, Utah. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, just follow me on my regular social and then you'll see links to everything else if you want. There you go. Um, we've got some stuff coming up this week, and we're going to be seeing uh, and next week. Uh, next next week is Mission Impossible with Rebecca. I'm Stavis. missing Mission Impossible. Uh, I will bummer. be in Florida, Florida Supercon. Oh, sucks to be you. First world problems. So, Getting paid, man. I got to get paid. There you go. Got to got to got to pay the bills. This uh, pays me nothing. Yeah, you, right, but but you have a house, and that's important. But I love it. There you go. Uh, so thanks everyone for watching, watching us gush about two series on Apple TV plus Ted Lasso, the silo. Excellent stuff. Don't forget to like the visually stunning movie podcast over on Twitter at VS movie podcast. That'll get you everywhere else. Or just go to the website, VS movie And you will see all of my written reviews, the stuff I talk with, with Val, with Ryan, with everybody else links to all the places I go that are not here. And <laughs> There you go. So that's the end of our Monday holiday. Val, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Bye. Uh, and we will talk to everyone later. Bye-bye.